Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon. So, uh, when I get downstairs the next morning, I am met with a familiar sight in oddly intimidating theme music. Both Karma and Rumpel stand on opposite sides of a table, their voices rising in an argument. They are fighting again? They didn't fight as much when I was dating Karma. I happen to catch their words as I walk quietly down the stairs. Who are you to criticize my work ethic when you were gone for several days, leaving me with your workload? It wasn't like I wanted to, and who are you to criticize how I work? All of the ladies I spoke to said that you shower them with compliments. What kind of professional behavior is that? I am having a hard time believing you're a professional with the way you flaunt yourself. At least I don't flirt with people to attract their attention. Ugh. And you flirt with them and don't even realize the effect it has on other people. Flattery is not a crime. Just yesterday, the princess came to see you in your room, all because you gave her the impression that you liked her. Huh? Were you actually spying on her? And you called me uncouth? No, I overheard her say it. And you're wrong. I never say anything if it isn't truthful. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, then, the truth of the matter is that you must be in love with many women. Because they all seem to think that you'll get down on one knee and propose to them. You say some sly things, Miss Karma, and yet you're the biggest liar of us all. At least I don't lie to my partner. Uh... I, I, I want to I see how things play out. Hold up a sec. Yeah. Okay. I want to see how this goes. I want I want to see what the conclusion of this is. I might come back and defend Rumpel if I don't like how it goes from watching from far, but I want to hear what Karma has to say. This is their fight. I have no reason to jump in and defend anyone. I watch their fight from the middle of the staircase. The two of them never seem to notice me standing there. I have never lied to the princess. Sometimes people might assume different intentions of my flattery, but I never lie. That's exactly what a liar would say to defend himself when he knows he's been caught. Liar! The only liar here is you! Excuse me, I'll have you know that I never lie. Then what is this about Miss Karma, hmm? One moment you say it's a disguise, the next moment you say... Rumpel flinches back as Karma stands taller and clenches his hands into fists. I begin my way to make my way down the staircase. I come to a stop in between the two men, who seem surprised to see me. I am about to speak, but the sound of footsteps distracts me. You two are at it again? Oh. Jurian stops at the table and frowns at them. Both men glance away from her cold gaze. Karma murmurs something before excusing himself. Now I want to go back and see what happens if I defend him. Oh, I just... I'm curious. I want to know. Rumpel tells me that he never lies. He tells me that he wants me to trust him. Though I still find it hard to believe, I do want to trust him. I walk down the rest of the stairs and stop at Rumpel's side. Both men look equally surprised to see me there. Rumpel has never lied to me yet. Karma looks up and stares at me for a few moments, looking startled by my sudden appearance. Then he sighs. Princess, a man that flatters everyone doesn't flatter anyone. At least he's not so conceited. He flatters himself constantly. Oh! That's a burn. Such a sharp tongue you have, princess. And you are very quick to jump to assumptions. You two are at it again? Jurian stops at the table and frowns at them. Both men glance away from her cold gaze. Karma excuses himself. Rumpel looks down at the table, his eyebrows knit together with frustration. What is wrong with you two? Why can't you just be civil with each other? 
I was kind of hoping that Jurian wouldn't butt in if I was the one to try breaking up the fight. Jurian, you're never here to see how these fights start. Karma's every bit a beast attacking me for no good reason at all. But with your keen eye, you should be able to discern that, right? Flattery won't work on me, Rumple. And second, I doubt these fights start without any bit of prompting from you. I swear I don't start anything. Karma's just always irritable. He's like a woman during that one time of the month. Ugh. Jurian walks away stiffly, leaving me with Rumple. I look at him, a little irritated by his earlier comment. He gives me a sheepish smile. Thank you, princess. For what? For defending me. I swear I meant what I said. I would never lie to you. I mean every one of my compliments, every one of my thank yous. You must know that since you came to defend me. Rumple, sometimes you continue talking when nothing needs to be said. But I am just expressing the depth of my gratitude. It is not necessary. It was such a small thing, too. Uh, princess, can you help me with some inventory? I am coming. As I turn away, Rumpel waves. I'll see you later, princess. Who knows, you might get your second good deed. I resist the urge to roll my eyes. It feels like it will be a while yet before I can achieve my next good deed. Chapter 6. Strings of Fate. What a brilliant day! The sun is shining, the town is full of laughter, and I have my sweet princess here to accompany me. <gasps> it sounds like I'm getting easier to read, too! <laughs> no, you've just said it enough times that I mesmerized it. That means you must pay attention to my words! That in itself is a compliment, princess. It is not. We are on our way to the usual store to restock our medications when a small figure leaves out through the front door. She stares at us with a lost look on her face. Rumpel reacts immediately, making his way over to her with a broad smile. Madam, I can't help but notice the pained expression upon your beautiful face. Is there anything I can do to assuage your worries? For seeing your lovely face shadowed by such sadness stabs me right in the heart. It's gotta be his wife. The woman stares at Rumpel, dumbfounded. His smile wavers and he takes a step back, suddenly looking alarmed. Oh, I'm sorry. It's you! Huh? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I... Um, this is awkward, madam, but I'm afraid I don't know you. What? Or do I? Do I know you? I take a step forward and look at the woman flatly. He has been cursed. He has amnesia. Amnesia? The woman stares at Rumple, scrutinizing him. You do seem... different. Changed from before, in any, in any case. So you knew me before? How terrible it is of me to forget such a lovely face! But perhaps you could help me remember! The usual flirty suggestion is in his voice, but the woman seems unaffected. I can. I can help you remember. You... You can? It's no wonder I can't remember your name. You have the fairy tale curse, don't you? Who is this woman? You truly don't remember me? I... I'm sorry. The woman looks conflicted, but the expression is gone as fast as it appears. I'm Bria. Your fiancé. <gasps> what? The shock is apparent on my face, but nowhere near as impressive as the astonishment on Rumpel's face. My fiancé? She has to be lying. How can Rumpel possibly have a fiancé with the way that he is? He is barely able to dedicate himself to a single woman for an hour. Bria takes a step forward and takes Rumpel's hands in her own. You don't remember holding my hands like this when you took me to the forest and proposed to me? Rumple opens his mouth, but no words escape. He reminds me of a lost dog all of a sudden, with his eyes so wide. Bria runs her fingertips over his hands. I loved you. You loved me. And I still love you very much. I... I don't remember this. 
How can I help you remember? Rumpel's voice is faint, but still he tries to smile. Um, the circumstances of the curse tell me that I need to remember through memories and, um, a journal somehow. A journal? I have your old journals. I can show you the very first love letter you wrote me. Bria starts walking, her hand still clamp clamped, her hand still clasped in rumples. Allergies. I stare after them for a few moments, trying to piece together what is happening in my head. I chase after them. Bria enters a house, one that Rumple stares at in awe. When she comes back out, she is holding a journal. She hands it to Rumple, then opens up to the first page. This is a little embarrassing, but there it is. You compiled your letters into a journal. Rumple slowly reads over the words, and I notice the strange, glazed look come back into his eyes as his expression grows more somber. This is like last time, when he remembered he was a doctor. Bria turns to me as Rumple is reading, and her eyebrows arch. And who are you? His partner. Partner? We are helping each other with our curses. Oh, your curse too? You poor thing! Bria's voice is flat. She is glaring at me beneath her smile. I have done nothing to merit this distrust from her. And I cannot bring myself to trust her either. Bria. Rumple looks up from the journal and stares at her. Yes, sweet? Rumple's melancholy expression throws me off. Last time he was so excited when he realized he was a doctor, but now his expression is heartbreaking. I remember. I did propose to you. In the forest, when it was dark, I... You set up little lights around the clearing. We spoke for a while, and then when you got down on your knee, you dropped the ring. It had fallen in the roots of some tree. We only noticed it when a bird came down to pluck it out of the bramble. I had no idea what you were looking for, but I still chased after the bird. And you got the ring back, and you knew. Bria holds out her hand, and I notice a beautiful red-green gem ring on her ring finger. That's a lot of G's and R's. It was still charming, though. I laughed for so long because it felt so memorable plucking your engagement ring out of a bird's beak. You're right. Rumple smiles, a little uncertainly. In that moment, I feel him turn away from me. He does not even realize I am there, standing with Bria. Why am I feeling so uncomfortable? You said you were helping Rumple with his curse, yes? She turns to me. There is no worry. I can help him now. That is what couples do. I have to force the pity out of my heart. I have to force myself to think rationally. Something still seems off about this, but Rumpel remembers. Which means this is the truth, isn't it? I am still his partner. I don't know about you, but I still exist. I still feel something is wrong. I do not trust this woman. Do you know anything about him, dear? Have you helped him regain any of his memories? She was with me when I regained my memories. Lucette is a valuable good luck charm. Ugh. Rumpel flashes a small smile at me before turning to Bria. Her eyes seem a lot colder now. Tell me, what do you go by now? Until we figure out your name, I need something to call you. Rumpel. Bria's cold gaze falls on me, and I can sense something in them that surprises me. Jealousy? Why would she be jealous of me? Rumple, would you maybe want to come back home with me? What? I know you must be overwhelmed, but our home might be able to help you remember some things. I'm... I'm sorry. I actually have a patient somewhere else that I need to tend to. Bria's eyes flash briefly. Her frown is there for a few seconds before she smiles again. 
You always were good with your patients. I am sorry. It's okay. I understand that you're overwhelmed. But remember, now I am here for you too. I want to mend things, to make them go back to what they were before. How about you look over that journal and then we meet again tomorrow? We can take this one step at a time. I would like that. We can get to know each other again, and in time I'm sure you'll remember what we used to have. I loved you, and I did too. I still do. A slight shiver runs down my spine as I stare at the two of them. There's that uncomfortable feeling once again. Bria and Rumple agree on the spot to meet tomorrow, and then she leans up to kiss Rumple on the cheek. He puts a hand on his cheek as she walks off with a gentle smile on her face. Are you okay? He looks at me and for a few moments I feel that his gaze lingers longer than it normally does on my own eyes. Then he smiles and laughs. Of course I am, princess. I just remembered something about my own past. I'm guessing that the second entry has appeared in my journal by now. I can't wait to get back to the Barchin to read it. Bria has the rest of my journals, so I might truly be able to remember everything if I talk to her. Including your love for her? He sighs out before he proclaims that we should finish our errands. I follow him around the town, though the scenery lacks its usual vibrancy. Rumpel doesn't speak to anyone, not even the girls, while we walk. He keeps his eyes oh, pardon me, focused on the ground, and when he speaks to the shop owners, his cheer is lukewarm at best. I try to start a conversation with him many times, but he shies away from talking. I feel like there is something he is not telling me. When we arrived at the Marchen, Rumpel quickly excuses himself, not even sharing his epiphany about his past with anyone. What has him so bent out of shape? He just regained another memory. I'm assuming he is going to go read about it now. It's not like him to hide things. I hope Rumpel's okay. Dun dun dun! Time lapse. It has been about a week since Rumpel regained his last memory. He has been meeting with Bria since then. But he still hasn't told me about the memory from the journal. He does not flirt with any girls, and when he sees me, his smile looks broken. He spends his days visiting Bria and tending to Parfait. You're worried about Rumpel, aren't you? Why would I be worried about him? Because Rumpel is no longer able to run errands with me, Waltz decided to take his place. But Waltz's presence cannot make up for Rumpel's absence. He'll be fine, princess. He's still figuring things out. I do not trust that woman. His fiance? She appeared out of nowhere. People who aren't cursed can't find the tavern, princess. She would have never been able to find him. So really, the only place she could have met him was out here in nowhere. I can tell that he is teasing me, but it does little to lift my spirits. No. Walt sighs. If you don't trust her, why not just ask around for her? She obviously does not want to talk to me. No, I mean ask others about her. So long as you find a way to phrase your intentions honestly, I think they might understand you. Rumpel says my honesty is good, but I also know the way I speak frustrates many people. Come on, I'll help. Waltz approaches a flower shop where several people are gathered to look at the fresh flowers. Excuse me, madam, sir. I was wondering if you knew anything about someone named Bria. We hear that she's engaged to a friend of ours, but he hasn't said anything much about her. And she's just like, what? Everyone calls me blunt, but I would never question others so openly. Does Waltz really expect people to be so open to him? Oh, if it isn't Waltz doing a little investigative work, are you? Just looking to find out more about someone important to a friend. Not going to put this into one of your shows, are you? Waltz raises an eyebrow and laughs. Of course not. Everyone just trusts Waltz. I suppose he must speak to people often, being a performer. 
They would probably never suspect Waltz to do anything morally questionable. And yet with me, they were suspicious of everything I did. I guess it's a good thing that Waltz is here. I stifle a sigh as the so-called investigation begins, and we will get to that in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye!